I'm a Pommy, this is a podcast. Welcome to the show. You might recognize my guest today from My Kitchen Rules, Kitchen Nightmares. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Colin Fasnish, how are you doing, mate? Good, good, good. And Crime Watch. I was on Crime Watch. <laughs> when was that? <laughs> <laughs> Recently. Good. <laughs> How's the renovation going? Painful. Oh, look, my house looks amazing. Um, compared to what it was so i bought a house nine years ago where mm. i live you can hear all these people in the back because there's a restaurant uh the castle ray the castle ray <laughs> quite fast niche um yeah my build is great design is great it's just you know dust don't do dust it's fucking dust everywhere fucking and it's painters everywhere. And decorators. chefs are quite clean well proper chefs are so proper I, chefs are, I don't yeah. do dust sweet um let's just like take me back to dublin growing up yeah what was your what was your what was your upbringing like in dublin uh, I had a great childhood. It's like one of those childhoods where it's gone now. You don't see it anymore. Where you, you know, you grew up. You went out and you, you got your BMX, and your uh, your parents go at nine Knocking in the morning. Doors. Yeah, go <clears throat> call all your friends, and at nine in the morning, come back at six for dinner, and you and twenty blokes just went off in your BMX and caused trouble, and then came home. Making dens and starting fires. Yeah, and, no, and there was no shit. phones. No one knew where you were, what you were doing, or in farms and whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then my parents were great cooks, so that's where I got into cooking. So did, did, the, uh, did the love of cooking start from like an early age? Were you involved oh, yeah. in the kitchen, yeah? Mate, five, six, I was like, I want to be a chef. Yeah. Um, my mother was a great cook. My dad was a good cook, and he cooked two days a week. Mm. So it was sort of like that uh, sort of Billy Elliot thing, I think. When you say you want to be a chef, they're like, well, that's a woman's job, or yeah. you know, cooking's for a woman. And I'm like, well, well, my parents were like, mate, if you want to be a chef, you better be a good one. Yeah, you can't be a shit one, can yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, you know, it's uh, it was it was sort. And then when I went to school, I went to Christian Brothers. Yeah. I fucking hated that. Did you? I hate them. Were you a nightmare at school, yeah? No, no. I was pretty. I was pretty. I was pretty quiet because you just got bashed. <clears throat> we just yeah. got bashed nonstop. Hit with a ruler. Ruler, the duster, punched in the head, mm. ripped up by the locks, your hair. Those were the days, weren't they? Hit with a belt, and it was all like. That's normal. Mm. I, I, fuck, when I think of it now, like we got nailed. It's soft, mate. Now, isn't it? Yeah. Fucking. You you, yeah. you hit them now. You go to jail. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. I just I just made. I I still have nightmares about school, and I'm 50, so I wouldn't want my kids to go through that. What was the worst thing that happened to? You? I think just getting punched in the head for not for not knowing something in Irish. Not concentrating. Oh, that was bait, yeah. Like, did, I, did you have to learn Gaelic back in those days? Yeah, 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 by law. You had to. By law? Yeah. In, um, in uh, that's your phone, you're ringing. See that? That's yeah, in, in TV land, that's a case of beer. Get I'll get you a case of beer. <laughs> that's fair uh, enough. I, I fucking, that's fair enough. See that? Uh, <coughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> School. Yeah. Uh, School, yeah. Oh, Gaelic, yeah, you had to do Gaelic it, <clears throat> up until secondary, like <clears throat> halfway through secondary. Which I, which I regret not really learn, uh, doing properly. Well, you speak at Lowe's in Australia? Well, no, it's just, it's your culture. Yeah, you know I, I mean? know, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I might actually go back and do it. Yeah? Yeah, I was thinking about it. I, I think you get more proud of who you are when you leave. Did you do the whole, like, midnight mass, all that type of stuff over in, uh, nah. back home? Right? Oh, back home. I was yeah, an altar boy, home, mate. Yeah, yeah. I was an altar well, boy. Well, you're an altar boy back yeah, home. Yeah. I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> I got kicked out. <laughs> Oh, uh, I think we were drinking the wine and we were messing with the lights and the priest lived across the road and you could see the church lights flickering and we had music going and then <laughs> didn't go down too well. <laughs> see, so you were a bit of a bit of a fucking tyrant back in the day. I didn't need it as I got older. When I was young, I was a bit of an nerd. I was all right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously Ireland, what sort of led, what led you to go down London? What was the, what was the, oh fuck, uh, the opportunities over in London? Oh, I think, um, well, I went to college in Dublin and worked for uh, a great chef who like got it. There was four of us in the kitchen. He got him. I was the lowest. So we got a, He got a Michelin star after six months. Mm. I got my arse kicked, uh, but I loved it. And he said, oh, if you do another year, because I was going to leave. If you do another year, I'll get you a job at Raymond Blanc in Oxford. That's a two star Michelin and Le Mans Roy Cat says on. So with 40 chefs in the kitchen. So I stayed and he got me a job there. Mm. So I moved over. I was in London for a little while, and then I moved down to Oxford, started working there, and that was fucking hardcore. How old were you then? I was 20, 22, 23. And how long was the... Was it like a programme, or was it just a job Programme? <laughs> it was like it was a prison, mate. <laughs> programme. It was like a young offenders programme. Yeah. It's, it's a two-star Michelin kitchen with 40 chefs, and you did 16 hours a day. 
and it could be every day. They might cancel your days off, like, mm. and it was open seven days a week, so. Yes, it's and fucking it was, hard graft. And you just got nailed in that joint. Like I seen some wrong shit go happening in a kitchen of thirty chefs. Seen people get knocked out and just stepped over mid service. Seen a guy get stabbed. Seen, stabbed in the kitchen. I've seen a guy, and that was just fuck move out of the way. And then I've seen a, a girl have a nervous breakdown, and they just put her in the fridge. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then and then walk around there because she was in the way. Like. <laughs> Mate, you, there's stuff that went on back then. It's yeah. like it. Do, it does remind me a bit of um, I was in the military from the very age of eighteen to twenty three, and it's very. Um, that's what uh, they call it a brigade. Yeah, it is. It's like the military, it is. and if you if you don't fall into line, it's very yeah, regimented. You can get fucked. Yeah. The kitchen's then, yeah. and if you didn't fall into line, man, fuck, see you later. Yeah, we used to lock a couple of the lads in the fridge. You do the the, the huge ones. Yeah, that yeah, you yeah. Walk into and fucking lock Freezer's them in there better. for about three hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <You can't, laughs> Yeah, you can't do that now. No, you can't do that. Not now. that I ever did anything, yeah, just yeah. saying that. How long did you stay there with Raymond Blanc? Two and a half years. Did you love it? No, nah, I sort of, I I didn't love it. I knew I had to do it. Mm. Like, I, it, it was just proper learning how to cook mm. and learning how to, like, be a chef. Run um, a team, all that type of stuff. Not really run <laughs> a team. But as you, as you went up the ranks, you got more power. Mm. And then a lot of people in Dublin who were, uh, I won't say they were, but relations who uh, said you'd never make it there. So yeah. I'm very fucking stubborn. Yeah. So I stayed there to prove a point as well. Yeah, I Probably. did the same thing. I was like, fucking, I, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Fucking yeah. join the military. I've said it now, haven't I? So fucking, yeah. I better do That's, it. That's stubbornness. When I, yeah, when I came back, <clears throat> I went and worked for these people. And uh, it was like in a, in a, in a, like a, dog track. They ran a dog track. So I went from a two, but I needed the cash to get to Australia. So I was basically just it's a lot like, of greyhounds. Yeah, great. I worked yeah, at a greyhound yeah. track cooking steaks, mm. but they paid me really well. Like, thanks for that. And I paid for my ticket here, so I had to do that for six months. But every day they nailed me. Like, oh, who do you think you are? Did you did you always have your sights set on Australia? No, nah, America. Uh, I always wanted to live in America, and then I went there for a little while. My brother was there. You made the right choice. Sorry. And yeah, but I was like, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. It, like everything's about the dollar, and I understand you have to make money. Uh, but it was just fucking too money orientated and I'm not money orientated I understand we need money but yeah, yeah. Uh, but you need a lifestyle as well and then it's I came here being... and I was like well, this is for me yeah yeah when was the first time you came out to us 1999 August no I went I was in America in August was it August <laughs> yeah 1999 I came on a holiday <laughs> like, most, like most Irish working, people working yeah. holiday yeah no, it wasn't a working holiday. I just came yeah. on holiday. And then just stayed. And I got the visa and I stayed. And then I was here a week. And I, I know a guy from uh, Raymond Blanc days. Mm. And he's like, there's a place called Bank. It's the Martin Place. It was where it's best known for this, the hostage siege. Yeah, yeah. So I that, was there when it happened. Really? I was one street across <laughs> when it happened. Well, I used to work in that, in that joint. Yeah. So that was a kitchen. Uh, and that's, that was a restaurant called Bank. So I got sponsored in a week. And then I got my residency in six months because it was pre-Olympic, so chefs were like top of the list. Yeah, they're and still pretty high up now. I don't, yeah, well, there is no one left because we sent them all back in COVID. <laughs> yeah, thanks <laughs> yeah. to the government, dickheads. I yeah. know, oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that place was another 16 hours a day. Yeah. But that was like one of the best kitchens I've ever worked in in my life. It was like 15 guys who could all cook who are all machines mm. and are now all run restaurants now. So, and when you work there, they're known as the bank boys. It was like a generation of chefs that came out of there and I was part of that. Did you get the tattoo? No, I didn't get the tattoo, <laughs> but I'm, I should have got, we got it was a couple of nights we nearly got tattoos. So yeah. We worked 16 hours a day and then we went out all night. Had a drink, yeah. Yeah, we were out of Some control. Some games. And then, and then back in the morning. It was like, it was, but you know, it was good. Yeah, nice. Um, what, what, what sort of, um, did you work in all area, aspects of the kitchen at that point? At yeah. that restaurant? Yeah, you except like for not pastry. <clears throat> I wasn't allowed to do pastry because it's not, <laughs> I'm not very good. <laughs> Still not very good. <laughs> you sort of, uh, after, after you finish up there, you're obviously, what year, what year is this? A bank was 2001, 2002. You obviously got like a 10 year stint after that, 10, 12 years before you sort of get into television. Oh yeah, then I, mate, do the research, mate. Then I, yeah, I, op I, I opened the four in hand. I know. And I, in I was- In Surrey Hills. 
No, that was 4 14. Oh, sorry, 4 14. Four hands yeah. a pub down from the Lord Dudley. <clears throat> um, and that was a shitty pub that I opened, and it was, it was like my second head chef's job. And I, I worked 16 hours a day, and I was a, I was a tyrant, man. I was like, I treated people the way I got treated in London, because mm. that's fucking. Yeah, you pass it on, don't you? And uh, we got two two chefs hats in a shitty pub, which was never heard of in Australia before, because yeah, it's usually nuts. like somewhere in the upper house gets two chefs hats. Mm. Uh, so it's 16 hour 20, and that's where we made our name was in that joint. But we just worked our ass off. My missus was on the floor. Uh, yeah, we used to churn through staff. Food was fucking amazing. But it was just, it was like an asylum. And then we'd go out all night, get pissed and fucking come back. It wasn't a very healthy lifestyle, but I was younger then. And then, so I made my name there and I was known as this argumentative, angry chef and blah, blah, blah. Were you angry? Yeah, very angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was, I was, because the way it was, it wasn't anger, it was pressure and fear yeah. because you didn't have social media. So if you got a bad review on a Tuesday in the paper, they closed you down. Yeah, fuck yeah. And I've seen so many restaurants before I get reviewed get closed down. And I'm like, that, that, this, this is not right, mate. Mm. So it was basically all, 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 everything was on the line. So every day was like, if, in case a reviewer came in. Yeah. So that's what it was. It was... When you put your own money into something and it's all yours and it's your baby as well, you, yeah. you know, I, it, it frustrates me. I've had businesses in the past. It frustrates me when you've got staff and they're like, you know, I want this and I want this and I want this and I want this. And you're just like, well, fuck me. Did you put your money on the line? Yeah. Like, I, you know, you're risking it all, right? But it was your so, name as well. And back yeah, then it was all because you didn't have like Instagram or any of that. So it was all, everyone knew everything about you. Yeah true word of mouth so mm. you fucking got a shit review you were known as that guy who and got you're the only as shit good as your last meal yeah. right but uh yeah and then i had my first daughter and everything changed then yeah yeah what changed me i was like mate i remember i chased i threw a microwave at a guy and then chased him up the hill because <laughs> he said something back to me i was a lunatic and then i chased him up the hill this italian guy Italian chefs are just melty. Yeah. And I was like, passionate, what, what mouthy. You, yeah, yeah. What you, I wouldn't say passionate, I'd say they think they are. <laughs> my, non, my nonna this, my nonna, fuck off. Um, you know, and I'm going to tell you now, Italians, not every nonna can cook, but they all bang on about their nonnas. Yeah. Some nonnas are shit. Yeah. Same, um, my nan was yeah, shit. My nan was shit, mate. She yeah. burnt crispy pancakes. Mate, she stopped cooking yeah, Christmas fish, dinner fucking two days yeah, before fish Christmas. Fingers. She couldn't even cook fish fingers. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> anyway, that's a cultural thing. And then I chased this guy up a hill. And I, I threw a microwave at him and he missed, thank God. And, uh, thank God, yeah. And then when I had my daughter, like something had happened, I'd be like, there's more to life. Yeah. I don't know, something switched, something clicked. Because I used to race motorbikes on tracks. And and then when I had my daughter, I was like, like if you yeah, come yeah, off, like yeah. something something <clears throat> switched. You lo I don't know. Good and bad. Your risk factor dropped slightly. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I remember when I had uh, my first one the three-year-old was sitting there and i was just you i don't know your perspective on the world shifts a little bit everything mate when you see when like yeah, i'm responsible for this modern dad and you you're down the uh, business end when your missus is having the baby and you see that come out you're like fucking hell like like how uh, like you, how amazing that this is happening yeah, yeah. and then you're like Fucking someone overcooked asparagus. Who gives a shit? Yeah, who gives a fuck? Like, There's more to life. When I see my daughter come, I was like, wow. And then you yeah. have a new appreciation for what you misses or what a woman does. Yeah, like I know. I'm only cooking. I'm like, oh, you yeah. push that out. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> but it. I think becoming a dad. Yeah, it just put it just changes your perspective on everything. Like I remember being quite an angry young man, fucking you know going through. Especially when I come out of the military, it was yeah. like yes sir, no sir, free bags, full sir. Suddenly, especially when you have a girl, like oh, you yeah, got yeah. two girls, mate. You just become a bit soft. I need to talk to you actually. I need to get a, <laughs> I need to get a gun. <laughs> I've got but a plan. I need to talk to you about asking yeah. some advice. I've got a plan. So what about the got first daughters? boyfriend that comes yeah. around? Yeah. So the first boyfriend, you fuck him up good, right? And you maybe lock them in the shed or something for a few hours. Like, yeah. And then the story will just go, like, it'll get bigger over the years. And it'll be like, don't mess with his... Don't mess with him, yeah. Yeah. Snap there with a bottle of whiskey on the yeah. first day you yeah. meet him. Like, Hello, yeah, mate. Can you drink? <laughs> <laughs> you got two kids now. Two daughters. It's yeah. karma. Yeah? 100%. What's it like being a house full of women? Uh, I do this thing called a crocodile. Yeah. 
So, because uh, I've got teenagers now and my wife, like, fucking hell. That's one going grey. Uh, that's why I look tired. Uh, so in the morning, they're all kicking off. Like, they kick off. It's mm. just like, fuck, you wouldn't believe it, three women. And then my wife's like, can you, can you hear this? But I pretend to be asleep and I just lie there. So it's like, I'm, just, I'm awake, but I'm not moving. I call it the crocodile. Tactic doesn't last that long, does it? Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> so take me up to the point where you obviously, you get discovered, right? Discovered. It's mainly through, is it your Twitter beef at the time? Oh, yeah. It's fucking, you couldn't write it. Well, it, there is actually, a, that movie called Chef. That's a fucking good film, that. I fucking invented that movie because that's, I did my fuck up before that movie came out. <laughs> did you? I'm taking credit for that. Yeah, go on then. So I... Spill the beans. I didn't know what Twitter was. So my restaurant manager said, I'll do this Twitter thing. Mm. And I go, okay. And then um, a journalist came in who was off TV. I'm not going to say names because I don't really need to get sued again. And she came in and she was, and we do this whole pig function, mm. like a whole pig on a board. And she was vegetarian and, Someone said she complained that she could see the head on the pig, and I went on to Twitter. But I thought I was talking to my three mates. Right. And I said, this fucking dish, 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 named her. Ah, dish, 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 shit. dish. Okay. And I sent it, and I went, dish, like oh, off. Into the and atmosphere. then I went home, and next day, I fucking, it's like, it's like going crazy. And um, a journalist rang me and said, oh, Jamo from the Telegraph, he said, do you want to comment on your spat with... And I was like, what, the, what are you talking about? How do you know about that? He goes, it's all over Twitter, mate. And I was like, well, everyone can see that. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and then on the Sunday, I was like on page three, a whole picture of me and the <clears throat> journalist on page three of the Telegraph, like the Sunday Telegraph. And I was, I went to bought the paper and hit it. And then my wife found them, like, fucking ape shit. And then one of my business partners was a lawyer and he's like, mate, you, you could go down big time for this. Like, she can, like, so funnily enough, she didn't come after me. So I sort of got away with it. And then I was sort of in the public eye then. Who approached you then? Channel, oh, I do, I done MasterChef for a few eps on that. Yeah. And then Ricky Proust, <laughs> who's a good friend of mine now, uh, it, asked me into Channel 7 he goes I want you to do this thing called MKR and I was like what the fuck's MKR he's like my kitchen rules I'm like I don't watch that shit and uh, he goes oh I'll get he goes well we'd, we'd, we think you'd be a good judge on it I said no nah, I'm not interested and he goes I'll give you 40 grand I was I'm like, fucking interested now yeah <laughs> mate I was like 40 grand and I said oh, I'll play it cool so I want 45. He's like, basically takes it out of his pocket. He's like, here you go. Yeah, yeah. Mate, now I know, 80, now, I, mate, now I know what's in TV. <laughs> 40 grand. Fucking yeah. you can get out of bed to do TV show for that. <laughs> that was for the whole series. Now I know what, what money's in it. Um, mm. So I said, oh, I, I took the challenge and I did it. And it's not easy. He was firing me on the second ep. He said, you're shit. Really? Uh, yeah, it was the best thing ever to happen. He told Tommy I was shit and how bad I was and... Because I'd make a mistake and, I'd, and then you have a hundred crew standing there and then you sort of get a bit self-conscious. I was a chef. I didn't have any media training. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, still don't. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was the best thing ever because I was the top of my game in my other job. Mm. And then for someone to tell you your shit, I was like, wow. Yeah. And that night I went home. And was it's like, good to go out of your kind of comfort zone like that though because you can get, com well, yeah. not complacent. Well, it's good to fail, can, I think. Yeah, it's good, yeah. Fail's great. <laughs> I think you keep... The more you fail, the better. Yeah. Because it fucking kicks you in the ass to come back. Mm. And I remember the next time I came back, I was like just hardcore. I was like the angry judge for a few years. And then I was like, people loved it. I reckon but, there's, there's a love-hate relationship on TV with you, though. Yeah. There's more people like I, me now than they used to. Well, it's because it's authentic, right? I after, think that's the what it, after I did The Jungle, uh, then, they'll, then they're like, oh, that's the real column. Yeah. Because then they were just, because in the early days, they just edited whatever what I said into, like I could say 10 nice things and one bad thing they would say. They'd say it, yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm getting paid. And I actually, the next year I got more than 40 grand, tell you that now. Mm. Uh, so I was getting well paid. And the whole thing is, like all these people on TV, if you don't like it, don't fucking do it. Don't, don't do it, yeah. Like, don't cry about it and keep doing it. Just don't do it. And then over the years, obviously, I've changed on MKR and I've said, mate, I don't want to be the the nasty guy love hate now yeah yeah give him a little dig give him oh, a hug no, give I him am, a little dig I, give I, him a hug I am, <laughs> I am quite uh, brutal 
Well, the I, Nonna's I, pasta comment was fucking. That was that was gold. That by the way. Yeah, I, I've said <laughs> I've, I've said that on MKR where someone's yeah, know, gone. Yeah. It, it's my Nonna's dish, and I said, "Well, your Nonna's shit." That was the tiramisu, wasn't it? Oh no, that was uh, oh the tiramisu. Tiramisu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now in the early days, hang on. I'm gonna gonna shout across the restaurant. Christine, shut up. See, it works. <laughs> What's wrong You're with you? You're <laughs> fired. That's one. That's one uh, employee gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've only, been, oh, only been half hour in. When we did kitchen nightmares, it was sort of uh, they wanted to keep. Uh, we had three months of meetings before we did the first shoot, and it was uh, Gordon this, Gordon that, and I was like, mate, I'm not Gordon. I've spent 50 years trying to work out colonies. Uh, and Australia's been through fires, floods, droughts, COVID. So I said, I don't want to go in and just rip the arse out of someone for nothing. Yeah. So I think the way we did our kitchen nightmares was quite good. <coughs> and I think it was the reason it did so well was because people could see what was wrong. And we pointed it out without ripping them to shreds. Yeah, yeah. Was well, it's, it's a... You care about it at the end of the day. It's yeah, not like you're doing it just to fucking do some good TV. Like it's, like it's not like, like, like the first one. I was ri I was firing, and then like let's go, and then the second one because you got to travel to all these places. Mm. And the night before, I'm like anxious. Like you've got to go in and you know upset people because they, the people do get upset when you tell them their food shit and yeah. the kitchen's dirty and and it's not nice, but it has to be done because be by said, the yeah. fifth day they, they think you're Jesus, mate. They're hugging you and yeah. kissing you and you've they got a new fit out. The kitchen's clean and but you got to get through the bad to get to the good. Do you ever go and catch up with some of those kitchens afterwards? I spoke to uh, the one in Queensland and the one in um, Mel in uh, Mel in Victoria and they're doing really well actually. Yeah, good. Fucking well done. Not everyone. You can not like that's the business. Not everyone does well. Like yeah. one sold, and after we did the rent house, so she made money out of that. Yeah. And then uh, one went bust. He was already on bust when we got there. Yeah. And then one fucking complained to the paper that I ruined her business, which she was just an idiot. Uh, mate. There you um, go. She just annoyed me in the end. Well, there you go. Your business is still open, so. My business. <laughs> can't be it, it's it's one of those. You know. Uh, Oh, I'm not a chef, but my mate says it's a great thing to do and I want to open a restaurant. That's yeah, the biggest that's, yeah, fucking... Fa like, chef, chefing and restaurants and hospitality is one of the highest drink, drugs and suicide rates mm. from... You know what I mean? If you like In the early days, as I said, we'd go out drinking all night and be out all night. You're if you the if candle you, at both if ends. You don't, like, that's <laughs> great, but if you get to my age and you're still doing that, you've got a serious problem. And I know a lot of blokes who still do it. Yeah. Touching on the um, suicide and mental health and, and all the rest of it, when we spoke for the first time, you were just coming out the gym and you'd been training fucking hard, still fucking breathing heavily down the phone. And, uh, and uh, it's one of those things, not a lot of chefs are massively into their fitness. And I was thinking, have you in like recent years, obviously mental health, I know you've had a few friends that have committed suicide yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Was, was the... Was fitness and looking after yourself, did that become a priority recently or has that been, have you I always kind of been into it a bit? I started doing it in four and hand days. Like I would go in the afternoon with, with the owner, mm. him and me, mm. and it just became two guys go, just to get out of the kitchen for an hour. Yeah. And uh, I found that when I came back, I was like, even if you ran or fucking did exercise, I felt yeah. more refreshed when I came back. Yeah, clear head. And, it was, and then I realized <laughs> that it was good for my head. Mm. And now I do boxing with a mate of mine, Adam Adin. Like, he kicks my ass, but like, fucking, it's good that someone kicks your ass. Gets the pent up energy out. Yeah, yeah. It? And then I do boxing, and I'm, I fucking never boxed in my life. Mm. Like, so I've only started like a year and a half, and I love it now. Like, if I went in a, if it was in a fight, I'd probably get bashed. But anyway, but it's a great way just to, like, you feel good after it. Yeah. Have you have you suffered from anxiety or depression? No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good, man. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm glass half full. Yeah. Like, I think I'm a pretty positive person. <laughs> you might sound that. I, I, I think I'm a very positive person and sh stuff happens for a reason or whatever. But then, like, I've lost, like, one of my best friends, Jeremy Stroud, he died. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah, that was, that was, that fucking floored me, man. That, when I heard about it, I was at a restaurant and, and I fucking fell on the floor of the restaurant. And then I sat in the gutter outside and my wife had to come and collect me. Or, yeah, it was funny. like I've, the room just you know that thing in Snatch when he loses all the money and the room starts shaking yeah 
that like you never think that would happen to a friend of yours so I'm a few friends now yeah it's uh, the same same for me I remember it wasn't actually while I was in the military it was when I left and all the lads that were quietly suffering with PTSD and stuff like that and then you find out so and so's hung himself in the bath or yeah, yeah, so and so's yeah. taking too many pills or so and so's fucking just, and you're just like, so oh. like it's good everyone's talking about it now but it was just fucking mm. non-stop yeah it's fucking wild yeah it's um, a lot of my school friends are dead <clears throat> Mm. Through a lot of them like Dublin drugs were huge heroin and all that a lot of them are gone from heroin suicide mm. yeah big yeah it's fucking right. I reckon exercise well fucking first of all being able to talk about it yeah then, yeah yeah but exercise as well just being able to fucking release some demons for an hour yeah and, and stuff like that it's, it's or have daughters well have daughters yeah yeah, yeah fucking hell because yeah. mate if you can't talk about shit and you got daughters you got, you got issues I'm sure there is a lot of dads out there don't talk to their kids you know yeah. what I mean but it's such a waste of don't have kids yeah don't bother yeah yeah why like, I don't get it it's like your grandparents you remember did your grandparents quite cold my, my granddad yeah. fucking never spoke to me yeah you know and like now I'm like I can't imagine that I yeah. that's all I, I do is yap on with my kids I just I don't <clears> get it like I, I, like I'm going I was tag with my daughters after this yeah so it's and then we do swimming and we do whatever, whatever. Mm. Like, obviously, mine are... Whether she in. likes it or not. Yeah, <laughs> fucking, yeah. One of them's getting bashed, by the way. <laughs> uh, locked in the fridge. Locked in the fridge. <laughs> Mate, I don't have to do anything. My wife's hardcore. Like, my wife's from Northern Ireland. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I'm, I'm the good cop in our house. <laughs> you fucking... You get on the wrong side of my wife. Fuck, yeah. you know. Fuck. Oh, that's saying something. I'd like to meet her. It fucking sounds good. Yeah, this is great. It's great <laughs> after a red wine. <laughs> Puts you into place. Oh, I am the, I, like, I talk a big game. I can talk it up. I am the lowest in my house. Yeah. I don't exist. Bottom rank. Like, I, I was, I'm on fucking TV. If my dad was on TV, I'd be like, my dad's on TV, right? Mm. The ad comes on and my show's on TV. My kids just walk by it. They don't even bat an eyelid. They, they don't, they're not interested in anything I do on TV. Oh, apparently I'm embarrassing. Well, they see you every day anyway. Yeah, but I mean, if my dad was on TV, I'd be in school going, that's my dad. My kids are like, mate, can you not do TV? So they, uh, when you're doing your, because you've been doing TikToks every day, pretty much of these sweet baby Jesus. Yeah, but there is a, there's a method to the madness there. Do they, do they just sit there and go, fuck sake, dad? No, they go, <laughs> they, they go, you cringe. But then I go, yeah, but I got a million likes. So who's the idiot? Like, yeah, and they're yeah, like, oh, yeah. we only got 10 on ours. <laughs> like, that started with- Bit I, of competition yeah. in the house. I actually got fired by Channel 7 uh, a few years ago mm. for speaking out about something. What was it about? Uh, Can you talk about it now? Yeah, it was, fucking, it was in the media. It was on the radio, that's why I got fired. Uh, I had to do 40 interviews and, about, and the show that we did that year was called Rivals and it tanked. Like it, the, the ratings were shit. Yeah. And but if you don't get a first good week, first good two nights, you're you're There's gone, no, man. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it will <clears throat> never catch up. No budget. And we spent six months filming it, mm. and then they launched it against the men's tennis final and maths, like the launch. Like no one's gonna watch it. The yeah. men's tennis final, like in Melbourne, like fucking hell. Like everyone watches it. So we and then I did forty interviews, and the other two judges were away and. By the end, I was just tired. It was like this time of the day, and it was, I was on the radio, and I said, well, if some fucking idiot that knew how to program a show, maybe it wouldn't have fucked up. Yeah, well, it's a pretty I, dumb I, thing to do, though, isn't it? Put well, streaming, not you, I mean, streaming the show the same fucking well, day as the... What, what do I know, mate? I'm only a host. <laughs> yeah. um, and after that, I got, I got a very stern talking to, and then, uh, and then I wasn't asked back, and I was like, wow, well, I've just been fired. And then uh, COVID hit, so my restaurants were closed. My TV gig had stopped. I'd, no, I'd never been unemployed in my life, and I was mm. fucking unemployed. And I was panicking, and I spoke to uh, Ricky Proust, who first hired me for MKR, he moved on to a different company. And he said, mate, you need to do stuff to stay relevant, because otherwise you'll just fade away and disappear. And that's when I started doing TikToks and videos in my kitchen or cooking because yeah. it was just good for my head it was like exercise you couldn't yeah, get yeah. to the gym yeah. so I was just cooking and doing videos keep you occupied <clears throat> and then uh, it turned into this other thing and then all these companies start going oh mate like we we actually thought you were a dickhead because of MKR in the early days because you're just negative but they're like oh, we like the way you are in your house mm. and I'm like well that's that's us you that's know what, what I mean? you really like yeah. yeah and then 
then I start getting, and then Seven hired me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking you be you. you better I'm, not let him go to Channel 9, fucking yeah. hell. So, uh, and then Channel 10 were ringing me, and I was like, well, I've just signed to Seven. And then it was like, who's oh, paying me more? <laughs> no, nah, you gotta be loyal, mate, gotta be loyal. And, uh, and then I got all these other jobs because it's just been me. And mm. I was like, oh, so you don't have to play the whatever. Mm. So uh, big ups to my friend Ricky Proust for sort of getting me on that. And I was, on there. I, I was just away with Manu because we film uh, MKR in New Zealand. So we've done February, March there. And we just came back last week after six weeks. So we did the second season over there. So that's two seasons this year. And Manu was like, like, why do you do these these videos like all the time? You, like you're on TV, you don't have to do these cookery mm. videos. And I was like, well, I like doing it. And then we did a video and like him and me did something together and it got like a million. Like, And he's like, holy shit. No, like, he started doing it. Yeah, he? no, no, <laughs> no, but he's like, oh. No, because he's a very good friend of mine. He's like, you know what? I, know, I used to, He used to bag me about it. And then he's like, oh, maybe there is a method to the madness here. Mm. Like, but he's like, you just you're like you're a bit of a lunatic anyway so he goes and you're just you like you don't care he goes where the best he, way to be yeah so it's good yeah. fucking <laughs> like talk, talk to me about that covid situation because i read during covid you're obviously doing starting your tiktok and doing all this type of thing you also set up a soup kitchen right oh yeah 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 so i i had <laughs> a lot of employees who have actually we paid to bring back who mm -hmm. had to leave the country because the government was so fucked up that everyone who paid tax, even all your uh, overseas workers, mm. when COVID hit, they didn't give them any money. They didn't get the money that everyone else got. But yeah, it was just they had the rent. They had they couldn't. Have, we had employees who couldn't afford petrol or rent. Or and I was like to my wife, "Do we move them into our house?" And she's like, "No, like, it's fucking. We don't know how long this thing's gonna go." So I started making food for the employees, like you didn't have any money. And then as I was feeding the employees, I realized, oh. There's other like restaurants yeah, out yeah. there, uh, so, and then people started to hear that I was doing this soup kitchen out of the back of my car, <laughs> and they start giving me food and raw ingredients, and then other people start giving me bread and fucking fruit and vegetables, and I was like, and then my mates are like, oh, do you want a hand? And I'm like, okay. So every Monday, for a year and a half, in COVID, we'd pull up to the car park, like public house, and give away meals and food, and then it turned into airline workers. Then it turned into the woman down the road with the, you can't afford to feed her kids. Mm. And she'd bring her kids and I'm like, yeah, it actually messed me up for a little while yeah. because I started drinking a lot of whiskey because I couldn't deal with it. Mm. I was seeing like parents who couldn't feed their kids. And I was like, fuck man, like this, this, like COVID, this first right. COVID I quite, I quite liked because I was just drinking and cooking mm. and told it was great. And the second COVID I was like, lockdown, I was like, this, is, up, this yeah. is fucked, man. Yeah. Like I just said, I don't <clears> get depressed, but I was like getting a bit, yeah. What, like when is this gonna end? Yeah. And seeing like other people who were depressed and starving and with no money. That's mm. what and then I'd come home and drink fucking too much whiskey on a Monday night and my wife said, mate, you need to sort your shit out because Yeah, you can't You're not no. helping anyone by no. you know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta go you, you So you, I did. I learned <laughs> I learned how to deal with it. Uh and then and realised that we were doing a good thing. So we did it for a year and a half, and it was, I'm fucking so glad we did it because a lot of people. Yeah, it's a great thing. To I do. think it's like we ran into the fire, whereas a lot of people ran out. You know, all these people who were hoarding all the toilet rolls and fighting over food, like <sighs> fucking. We, we were we, and we were given rather that rather than taking, and I, I put that down to my old man who sort of he was sort of when we were younger goes you should be if you are in a position to help people, that's yeah, what you, you should. do. Yeah. So I put that down to my dad. Yeah, fuck. We used to. Uh, I did. Well, I still got the gym back in the back in the UK, and the amount of people that relied on that gym to yeah. know, sort their mental health out or get out the house for an hour because they're going through a rough time and the rest of it. And they shut the gym down opposite. There's a fucking office with 150 people in it. Yeah. My little gym only held 20 people. Yeah. But my gym's got to shut, and that fucking office can stay open. Yeah, 150 yeah, yeah. People. I can believe it. So, the office block opened at eight o'clock in the morning. I'd open the gym at 4 a.m until fucking 7.30, close it. That office opened at five o'clock in the evening. I used to open it at 5.30 till 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Police come knocking on the door at 11 a.m. on three different occasions. And on the last occasion, they said to me, what hours are you here? And I was like, I'm here before it opens, I'm here after it opens. They were like, okay, well, we're only gonna come and check on you at midday. Yeah. So if you're here, make sure you've got a toolbox with you. Fucking pretend you're doing some upgrades, whatever else. 
because we were just trying to get people to, you know, it's we were giving them cra- It's this, crazy now when you think of it. <clears throat> what, it's fucking what, ridiculous. What happens? And, uh, yeah. yeah, it's fucking wild. Well, I'm, I'm glad what we did what we did. Yeah. But also I did it just for fucking something to do. Yeah. There's only so much... You Tiger King occupied. you can watch <laughs> fucking, When that ran out We're all The whole country's like What the fuck do we do now <laughs> Fucking Breaking Bad and cooking, I was cooking all. food Like like for 20 people every day My <laughs> wife said You need to fucking stop man Like uh, there's only four of us you here You can't sit on the fucking Couch all day though Can yeah. you And do whatever But also I, I, My TikTok start, In saying that Started a business Where Zoom Like whoever invented Zoom Mate Woof so we started doing, a company would ring me and go, you know those videos you do? Can you do a cookery class for like 300 people? Uh, yeah. We want to buy our workers uh, a class to keep them motivated because they're all mm. working from home. So on a Friday night, we'd do a class for a different company and they'd give us 15 grand a class. That's yeah, And then we got a proper <clears throat> camera team in and mm. said, that's how I met the guy I've gone away with in two weeks to film a show. And then we turned it into a business. And so every Friday we were getting 15 grand. I'm like, fuck standing in the kitchen. Yeah, like, <laughs> do it online know? now, yeah. So, yeah, so out of the bads, <laughs> I think out of the bad, something good happened. But that's like when your back's to the wall. Mm. Like when you panic, we came up with it. Let's talk about your uh, new friend, your, not new friendship, your new, I don't know, bromance with Manu in the last couple of seasons of MKR, I suppose I it's blossomed. It's new. Yeah, no, not new, Ten but years. it's blossomed recently on yeah. TV. Well, we always, uh, like, uh, Pete was always like, it was Manu and Pete, right? Mm. And I'm, I'm friends with Pete, but I was like, I want Pete's job. <laughs> oh, so I go, I want Pete's job because... I don't know. Pete, Pete enjoyed it, and then he didn't enjoy it. And yeah. I'm like, I'll, I enjoy my job. Yeah. And then, uh, and then it became available. Because I don't need to really go into the, how it became available. <laughs> uh, and then they were like, "Oh, you two sort of get on." And I'm like, "We, well, we should do it." And then they're like, "Oh, well, we'll stick a couple of other judges in there." And I was filming Kitchen Nightmares last year. Yeah. So I only did a few eps. Uh, and then the eps we do together, like they're like, because we get on outside of work anyway. We live beside each other. Yeah. We have Christmas dinner together, all our families and neighbours and everything. So mm. they're like, oh, you guys sort of get on together. Maybe we'll stick you together. And then, mate, they were just... Because there's all these rules when you film MKR. You can't, you know, move your suit this way. You can't wear this. You can't wear yeah. that. And we're like, fucking, let's just go for broke, man. Yeah. Like, we're well 50. Like we might, we might not get hired next year. Let's just, <laughs> let's just go rogue. And we went a bit rogue. And then they're like, mate, people like The ratings that. are better, yeah. Yeah, the ratings, we beat, we beat the block. And, right, <laughs> and, it's, and we've just, uh, just seen the ad they're hiring now for next year our uh, contestants have just put it out today so we got rehired for next year and that's that's a can huge, you cook can you cook yeah oh fucking hell well then you're on that, you'll fit the brief get on come on then <laughs> you. you got a year mate to, how long how long we got nah, you got you got till you've actually got till just after Christmas fuck you got six weeks mate to fucking yeah. get your shit together huh well, Apple I, crumbles and fucking. I think uh, just two 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 friends being real rather than um, trying to be the uh, cardboard cutout of the the um, talk show host. Yeah. Uh, and people sort of related to that. And yeah, we were quite honest, like about some of the stuff. Some stuff was emotional during the year. So mm. we lost our friend Jock as well during the year, and we were filming during that, and we were like fucking, you know. So yeah, it was, life's too short to fucking be stuck in a fucking box. Yeah. So. <clears throat> <clears throat> hopefully and then New Zealand the season that's on now it's currently on now the one we filmed in February is, is beat has beaten everything on TV over there mm. and that's the New Zealand version yeah, and the, Ma- MasterChef's huge over there isn't it yeah we're bigger yeah uh, much bigger yeah. and uh, so I think just two blokes being not and we're doing a travel show in December with them that's the one in Mongolia right no no that's a different one that's oh, a different one the travel show is called Off the Grid, and that's me and Manu in a caravan, just being idiots, that'll right? Be, just arguing be, be like hilarious. a husband and wife driving that'll around. That'll be hilarious. Right? A little bit. It's, it's a total rip off the Gordon Gino thing and all that. Fuck but it. it's <laughs> it's us two in a caravan. Like we fucking we argue like a husband and wife, but then we will fucking make up. But there's just no sex. <laughs> and uh, uh, so he said. But uh, yeah, that's a few whiskeys. <laughs> uh, so that's that show. But the one in two weeks is in. That's what a. Uh, a production company who makes movies and docos and because America closed down because of the strike mm. and he used to film our stuff in the house he said do you want to do a sort of a 
documentary, st- <clears> like a no reservations, Anthony Bourdain thing. And he goes, let's go to Mongolia. And I'm like, yeah, because it's not going to happen. I said, yeah, and it's fucking happening. We leave on the 29th. Awesome. Yeah. So no New Year's in Australia then? No, no, I'm back on the 16th. I have to be back for Christmas. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate. Nice, yeah. Two, week, two and a half weeks and minus 20 is enough for me. You'll be all right. Yeah. So we're not going to see you on like SAS Australia or anything like that in the future, nah, are they've we? asked me to do it. They are, Aunt, Aunt Middleton, I was at the Logies with him and he's like, you should do it. Aunt. Yeah. Fucking, stitch we were, him up, mate. And we were, uh, <laughs> we were getting on quite well, a few drinks, and I'm like, this is so boring. This, he's like, let's just get pissed. And then he's like, you should do it. And I'm like, yeah, we're all friends. And then I'm like, nah, you would nail me. I bet the guy would fucking say something smart because I can't shut the fuck up. Come on, it'd be great TV. Nah, they've asked me to do that. <laughs> they've asked me to do Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, nah, nah. <laughs> you don't want to do Dancing with the Stars? Nah, nah. Fucking hell. Just have a few whiskeys okay. before you go on. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, no, I'm quite happy with I've mate, I've I've got I did four shows, four or five <coughs> shows this year. Like that's unheard that's of. That's a lot, yeah. And that's, that's but it's it's very rare to do that. And mm. and I love what I do. So, you know, Keep it's, doing it's it. not really work. The only thing is you're away from home a bit, but yeah. you know. You've got to make hay while the sun shines for yeah, sure. Pay bills. What does the what's the future hold for Mr. Fasnich? Fucking I don't know. Grey more grey hair. Teenagers. Five more shows next year? Yeah, many shows. I'm doing, I'm doing four next year. I've just signed for another one yeah. that I can't say, but it's for Channel 7. Oh, okay. It'll, it's announced in uh, January. Fantastic. Mate, it's been fucking great talking to you. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of F-bombs in this. That's <laughs> <laughs> but you get a military guy and a fucking chef, and there's just Fs flying everywhere. I'm half Irish. So and I've fired go. someone halfway through it. So there you go. <laughs> That's a good day at the office. Mate, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe to the channel. Get in the comments if you want to just fucking have an argument with, with Colin. And uh, cheers. Pleasure. Sweet. Thanks for having me. Thanks, mate.